Now I'll turn it to Senator Moran. Uh, Chair Cantwell, thank you very much. I'm, I'm excited about this hearing. Uh, recognize its value and importance. Know that we have uh, a lot of expertise in the room. Uh, I think this country and certainly the state of Kansas, the state of Washington is poised for further growth related to aviation and aerospace. Uh, and the limiting factor is uh, highly motivated, trained and educated workforce. So we have our work cut out for us and you outlined the statistics that demonstrate uh, how, how much opportunity uh, and how much challenge we have. Um, during the 2018 um, FAA reauthorization, Congress worked to address this issue by creating the Aviation Workforce Development Grant Program, aimed at strengthening the pool of pilots and aviation maintenance uh, and technical workers. A total of $10 million in grants was awarded, more than 20 recipients, but the demand sought by all those applicants was over $120 million. Industry, academia, and Congress all recognize that in order to remain a global leader in aviation, we must have a strong workforce. I'm honored to lead the hearing today and gain insight into how Congress can continue to support the growing demands in this workforce, particularly as we pursue the upcoming FAA reauthorization legislation. I'd like to give particular welcome to one of the witnesses here today, Dr. Sherry Utash, uh, president of Wichita State University's Campus of Applied Sciences and Technology, or WSU Tech. Dr. Utash has served in her position as president for almost a decade, overseeing the college's transition from Wichita Area Technical College to WSU Tech, our state's largest technical college. WSU Tech's commitment, to specializes, uh, commitment specializes in the delivery of career technical education while driving economic development within the region and meeting the current and future workforce needs of the industry. Dr. Utash oversees an innovative partnership and solutions to building a talent pipeline titled Get to Work, uh, Works, W-E-R-X. Uh, this program offers students full-time paid employment within the maintenance, repair, and overhaul sector while simultaneously processing through WSU Tech's Aviation Maintenance Technology Program. Dr. Utash offers a unique perspective with experience in teaching and working in both higher education and private industry and she's helped uh, combat workforce challenges in our state, and we appreciate her very much, and I look forward to hearing what she would have for advice to me and my colleagues. Uh, aviation is one of Kansas's, I'm sorry, is one of America's, that's an easy slip for me. Uh, aviation is one of America's top industries, and in Kansas, aerospace and aviation makes up nearly 20% of our state's exports. Wichita, also the number one aerospace manufacturing metro uh, in the nation. Our nation and state success within this vital sector depends upon those who train, educate, and prepare our students to be ready contributors within the aviation industry. In order for our nation to continue leading in aviation, it will take innovative programs like those Dr. Utash has helped implement. Uh, I look forward to hearing from her today and all of our panelists, and uh, I look forward to working with you all as we uh, work to reauthorize the FAA. And Madam Chair, I would take this as an opportunity to thank you again and thank you publicly in, in this uh, sec, uh, setting. AMJP, uh, Senator Cantwell was hugely uh, necessary, engaged, and a willing partner uh, as we passed aviation manufacturing jobs protection during COVID, which created the opportunities for us to not lose, but to maintain our workforce during a very challenging time in the aviation and aerospace industry. Uh, that legislation, its success, would not have been possible without Senator Cantwell, and I remain very grateful to her for uh, her assistance. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Thank you, and I thank you, Senator Moran, for working with me on that in the uh, COVID uh, program and the, and the ensuing challenges that we faced in actually getting it over the goal line, but I think once we did, we realized how much the supply chain itself benefited from keeping those jobs, and now as we see uh, companies advertising on TV for workers and the challenges we face. I'm glad we kept every one of those jobs that we could.